this year's NFL draft, the Kobe Durant went fourth round, 37th overall to the Los Angeles Rams. Now, if you're like me, you're from South Carolina, we love to see it. Everybody was ecstatic that the small town kid from Lamar, South Carolina, was able to do big things. You see him on national TV getting the call from Sean McVay and the rest of the people in the in the front office of the Los Angeles Rams. We were very excited. You know, we love to see our own prosper uh, coming from the state of South Carolina. We love to see people put on. So it was a great time for the state, especially for Orangeburg and South Carolina State at that. Now, now, after that happens, once the once the feelings die down a little bit, there are people to give their opinions on prospects, especially uh, coming from the HBCU realm, the FCS realm, and how good they think they'll be. In the case of Kobe Durant, he was graded on NFL.com by one of the analysts a 5.86. For those of you who don't know how good that is on a scale, when you look at the scale, it basically equates to him being an average backup or a special teamer. I'm here to tell you today that is false. That's, that's one thing I'm not buying. Number one, these analysts have gotten it false many times. And with this one, I definitely feel like this is coming from a place of he hasn't watched much of the Kobe Durant outside of the Clemson game. Uh, like kind of, kind of like a lot of these in, uh, analysts for the NFL network. But I'm here to tell you why that, that rating that he has is BS. Also, disclaimer, you can see at the bottom of the page on NFL Network, it says, would not be surprised if he does outplay his evaluation. And they put that at the bottom. See, him putting it at the bottom, tell me everything I need to know. He doesn't really watch. He didn't really watch the Kobe. He's just going off of what he's seen, like the little that he's seen. When we, when we discuss the Kobe Durant as a whole, um, a lot of people bring up his size. He's 5'10", 180. Some sites have him at 5'10", others at 5'9". I, I don't worry about that because I seen, I've seen his play style multiple times. I've watched him throughout multiple games. Number one, he's, he's not that much bigger or smaller than Asante Samuel Jr., who went second round at 5'10", 180 from Florida State. As far as girth goes, he's a little bit more muscular, but they're not that far off in size. And you've seen what Asante Samuel Jr. was able to do last year for his uh, West Coast counterpart with the Chargers. You've seen what he was able to do. He had a great rookie season. Kobe Durant can do the same. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, right? But it's going to be done. I thoroughly believe that. And I'll tell you why, because some of the, wor the biggest worry they have on him, what's the biggest thing they have on him? His size. His size, he's too small. Um, what, he, he, he can't hold up against bigger receivers. That's false. If you go to the Clemson game, right, you would see he held his own. Throughout his college career, Kobe has done nothing but hold his own against bigger receivers. He's not the biggest guy in the world. We, we've seen this on a consistent basis. And because South Carolina State is able to go out and play these FBS schools, you've seen it on the biggest scale and you've seen it on his scale many times against Clemson. It doesn't matter, right? You, you think his physicality isn't all that good when in reality in the Clemson game, all you did was see him blow up screen plays, right? Versus Alabama A&M and that great receiving core they had. You've seen him get two interceptions you've seen him in his exceptional ball skills go uh, again going back to the Clemson game goes back gets two picks right he's he doesn't get pushed around as much as people would have it would have them uh would have you to believe he doesn't get pushed around like that he's feisty he's fast and he's physical he plays with a lot of physicality they, they sometimes argue that okay we'll give you that but what about in the run game he's going to get targeted in the run game that's what they say um, I don't know if they've been watching the same Dakobe that I'm watching, but I've seen Dakobe on numerous occasions chop down at the running back's legs. Yes, he isn't six foot. He isn't six one. He isn't six two. He isn't like 215, 220. So yeah, he has to take a different approach to tackling the ball carrier, right? He doesn't get hung up as much as you would like to assume that he does. 
He really does chop down at the legs of running backs, and he's able to do it in a consistent manner. So now you don't have to worry about his durability when it comes to these bigger uh, these bigger athletes that he's going to face. Now, yes, pause. I do know the NFL is a different beast. I get that. But the Kobe Durant is able to position himself in a way that he's able to make the tackle consistently. I do not think durability will be the issue. If, if size is the only is the biggest worry with the Kobe. You really don't even have to worry about that, right? Because now you're going to the NFL where you get the best trainers, the best facilities. He'll he'll get bigger. If the coaches see what I see in him and, and the whole the whole town of Orangeburg sees in him, he, they'll they'll prioritize him getting bigger. That's no problem. Give him a year and he's fine, right? But everything else, his game is is second round at least, not fourth. His game is second round, and I've always felt that way about the Kobe Durant. What he brings to the table is exceptional ball skills, right? Which is why he has 12 career interceptions. On top of that, he brings what bigger corners can't necessarily bring at their 6'1", 6'2", frames, right? Which is lateral quickness and agility to go with that 4'3", foot speed that he has. A lot of big corners can't really bring that to the table, Right? Is there are, there's always a trade-off somewhere, which is why you want a guy like the Kobe Durant who's able to go against these receivers and the fact that they're getting a lot, a lot better with route running. You, you, there's too many route technicians for you not to want a corner like the Kobe Durant who has the foot speed, who has the fluid hips, right? Who has little to no wasted movements in his game, in his backpedaling, in any kind of coverage. You even, you even heard one of the analysts say it during the NFL combine when Kobe was completing the drill, they said no wasted movements. When you look at Kobe's tape, it is no wasted movements in coverage. You will never see that with him. You'll never see it with him. So you need that uh, against these guys like Devontae Adams, Amari Cooper, uh, Keenan Allen, guys who are running routes crisply. Like, they're running routes at such a rate that you're you're thinking to yourself, like, they're they're – they're changing the game with the way they're able to run routes. So you got to be able to keep up with that. Um, and Dakobe can do that. On top of that, man, he touches the ball way too often for people to even consider overlooking him the way that they did. This man has 12 career interceptions. Let me say that again. 12 career interceptions. He led the MIAC in picks. 2021 Defensive Player of the Year. He averaged 2.2 bat downs a game. On top of that, last but not least, his mindset. Dakobe worked at FedEx out of high school. FedEx went to South Carolina State, redshirted, and became one of the best DBs in the FCS. A guy who showed out versus some of the top competition in the country. A guy who picked off DJ Uli Ungale, who at this point, may not be a first-round pick, but definitely isn't going to fall out that second round just because of the sheer talent and size that he has. There's, there's, there should be no reason why Kobe was overlooked. There should be no reason for you to assume that Kobe is going to be a special teams player or a below-average backup at the most. I think that that rating was BS, as nice as I can put it. It was BS. Um, and I think that they didn't do their due diligence, not the Rams organization, but I think that that analyst didn't do his due diligence when scouting to Kobe Durant. I thoroughly believe that. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Shout out to the Kobe Durant, man. Um, trying to get him on the channel. Hopefully we can so we can get a live interview. But shout out to the Kobe Durant. Shout out to South Carolina State University for continuing to pull out, put out NFL talent at the rate that they're doing. Um, to win games and championships as, mu as much as they're doing. This is why that mentality is so hard and so true for them. The dog got to be in you, not on you, right? They they embody that. The whole the whole school, the whole athletic department of South Carolina State embodies that saying. The dog got to be in you, not on you. They might not have the top tier facilities, but they don't need it. They make champions. They make professionals. They make successful people because, because by the time you leave South Carolina State, you know how to make it through anything. You know how to make it through adversity. That's what they that's what they teach on top of giving you a great HBCU experience. So shout out to them. 
But with that being said, you are watching the CFL podcast. I go by the name of Kobe. I'm out.